Jim Cavanaugh, uh, Christopher, Christopher Ray in his press conference says the bombs contained energetic material that can be dangerous if subject to the right combination of heat, shock, or friction. What you, now that you've gotten a little more details about these devices, and I know you, don't, you, you haven't been able to personally inspect them, how is he planning on detonating these things? And do you have a better understanding of that? Yeah, well, that's a lot of fancy bomb talk. I mean, they think it's an explosive material or an incendiary material. It's a, it's a material that's going to burn uh, or blow up. It's going to, you know, it's going to act when it's subject to shock, friction, or heat. That's just like dynamite, C4, low explosive powder. You know, we get into a lot of fancy bomb talk, uh, <laughs> IEDs. You know, that was our inside baseball talk for 40 years, yeah. and now we always hear it on, on the news. So it's fancy bomb talk. It's a bomb. It's a homemade bomb, basically. That's explosives or incendiary material. And the first charge, I just read the complaint. The first charge in the complaint is 18 U.S.C. 844-D. This was the bread and butter statue of ATF. It's the Interstate Transportation of explosives with the intent to kill, injure, or intimidate. Under that statute, you don't have to prove it's a bomb. In other words, you just okay. have to prove it's an explosive material. So interstate transportation of explosives with the intent to kill, injure, or intimidate. Clearly, they were sent interstate. What, what they used was, this is smart, and this is coming from, I'm sure, and Mimi can tell you, the assistant U.S. attorneys who right. hover with you doing the complaint. These are the char these are the charges that they can easily prove right now. Right. The intimidation eight uh, eleven fourteen is assault on a federal officer, and of course that includes Mr. Brennan, the president's. That's if you shoot a federal agent, that's the same statute. So these are easily provable. The mailing statute. Uh, so it's it's smart. It's smart money what they went after, and uh, the fingerprint. That's the solid evidence backed up by the DNA. And, of right. course, his motive, motive all over the van, Chuck. I mean, these cases you sure, really yeah. like because it's all over the place. Well, let me go to the profile of him. Clint Van Zandt, you, you essentially, this, it feels like this fits exactly the profile you thought. Uh, a little bit older, loner, white male, that sort of thing. He sort of ended up fitting the, the, the profile you were hinting at. Well, I think, Chuck, you and I were talking, and we suggested no more than 24 to 48 hours uh, after we last talked that he'd be in custody. So I think the authorities have been able to carry that off for us. And, you know, this guy, he's going to have a psychiatrist who's going to work with him and talk with him. But I think one of his relatives has hit the nail on the head. He describes this guy as a loose cannon, a lost soul who lived in his vehicle, who took showers uh, at the local gym. He shot himself up with steroids. Uh, he involved himself with uh, uh, male strip dancers. Uh, you know, when you look at the mentality of this guy, and again, we're trying to understand if there was anybody else involved, I, I, it's hard to imagine anybody else would want to associate themselves Right. with this guy and so i think he could be fully capable of doing everything that that uh, he's charged with realize that just this year i look back on the internet i have found individuals who've built 20 30 40 pipe bombs that atf and local police had arrested uh the uh the two columbine shooters in 1999 had almost 100 pipe bombs they had built so there's a strong possibility there are other devices out there and I think as Jim and I are talking about, the question is, where was he assembling? Did he have a bomb factory inside of his van or was he using another location? That's one thing the authority, authorities are still trying to find. Right. Are there bombs in the system? Are they delivered someplace else? This investigation is not over with. It's not a slam dunk case, but I tell you what, you've got physical, you've got psychological, right. you've got investigative evidence on this guy. He is not a rocket scientist, but he sure scared the hell out of us this week. Mimi Roca, why is he not being charged with attempted murder? Well, I think, um, you know, as, as many people have said, this is a quick hit. These were the easiest charges to bring now. They're good charges. They're strong charges. Um, you know, attempted murder requires a level of intent uh, that, you know, they just don't need to show right now. So why are you going to put that in a complaint? If I were betting, I would say this is not all the evidence they have right now. 
it's certainly not all the evidence they're going to end up with. This investigation, as everyone has said, is ongoing. And I think there's going to be a lot more evidence gathered. But my guess is it's not all the evidence they even have right now. But they don't want to put all their evidence in a complaint because they don't want him to know what they have, especially if they were trying to question him. If he's not talking, fine. That's his uh, right. But, you know, they're, they're still going to get more evidence. And my guess is they will be able to show that intent. But frankly, even if they don't, these, these are significant charges. They're, he's eligible to be charged. Uh, he's being charged here in the Southern District of New York. But there's other counts that could be brought in other districts. So he's facing a heck of a lot of time in prison, as is. He's probably never going to see the light of day as a free man. I would. Hopefully. I would guess that's right. <laughs> Jim, Jim Cavanaugh, talk to me about this interrogation issue right now. He's not being cooperative. He won't say how many more he made. He's not being helpful here. I'm, obviously, I know you've run into this before, and Clint, you've run into this before. So I really a question for both of you, but I'll start with you, Jim. Give me some ways that you think, you know, in your experience, how long it takes to crack somebody like this. Well, in the first part, as a commander on a case just like this where the guy's not talking and I'm worried about more bombs, what I'm going to be doing is driving the agents into his computer because I want all the purchase records of how many of these digital alarm clocks did he buy and how many do we have? How much length of pipe did he buy and how much do we have? And mm -hmm. how much is, you know, we're going to get a search warrant and I, I want you in there with a tape measure measuring that PVC pipe that's left in his garage. I want to measure all the bomb, P you know, we know how much is in the bombs and how much is left and how much isn't and how many timers did he buy or do we have them all is there two sitting on the bench and then he only bought 15 and we have 13 bombs and two on the bench I'm gonna feel better so I'm gonna be driving that first uh, and you know like Mimi said look I kind of always like these smart alecky guys that you know they don't want to talk they want to be the tough guy and all that kind of stuff and you know, some of those guys really, they're not that smart because you got so much evidence on the guy, you really don't even need him to talk. I mean, you got his fingerprints, you got his DNA, you're going to get his bomb factory, you got his motive on his van, you got a, his motive in his targets. Yeah. I mean, okay, fine, don't help us, you know, but it, it's not <laughs> necessary. There is many cases where if the guy doesn't talk, you can't get anything. This is not one of those cases. And, uh, but the main focus of the FBI, the ATF, the postal inspectors, the police is public safety right now. Driving it in, is this the end right. of this? bomb campaign that's what they got to drive today mm -hmm. and then clint profiling him and maybe his associates how can obviously they want to see not necessarily obviously want to see if he had any help but i assume they're going to try to talk to anybody he interacted with on a regular basis and 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 find out more about him and see if any of his associates are helping him yeah, they're going to put together a wiring diagram of this guy based upon his cell phone, based upon his uh, credit cards, his uh, 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 activities on the Internet. Realize this is a guy who used five, if not six, different aliases to post on the Internet. But again, to get a chance to talk with him, this is someone who has spent the whole week trying to get our attention. Now's the time, you know, if we get a chance to talk with him, we say, you know what, you've tried to get our attention all week, you've got it. Now you've got one chance. You can tell America why you did this. I mean, you don't want to be written off as just some nut, do you? you you've done it for a reason. Tell us what that reason was. In the meantime, we're going to be looking at his vehicle, his license plate. We're going to look at every time he's passed uh, any type of license plate reader. We're going to be following his credit cards. We're going to see where his iPhone has beeped at the last month or two. So there's going to be this tremendous map that's going to be laid out. And it's going right. to follow every movement he's made, walking, driving, talking right. on the Internet, so we can put all of this together and see what this guy's life has been like the last few months, maybe the last few years. But realize this is a guy who, like 15 years ago, got into an argument with somebody with the power company and said, oh, if you don't do what I want, right. maybe I should throw a bomb at you. So for at least a decade and a half, he's been thinking of bombs as a conflict resolution method. Clint Van Zandt, Jim Cavanaugh, you guys were incredible partners all week long and sort of, frankly, taking us to this moment and, and frankly, foreshadowing almost 
to a T who this person likely would be and what they would be. Mimi Roca, as always, thank you for the legal perspective there. It's, uh, it's almost all going to be in your court soon. But for now, thank you all. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.